Okay, today's video is not about Thomas. It's another how-to video, and this is on the trains I have here on the table. I have two D5198 all right, here's the other one. And I have one D51-200. Now, the shows today is about why this one train is closest to us. Oh, before I go, the D51s are a very famous line of trains in Japan. Uh, it's sort of like uh, the Japanese love their trains like the British do, and the D51 is is one of their top nostalgia trains. All right, they, uh, they have a, a Japanese railroad coach behind each one. And the D200 has a brown coach it pulls behind. Now the D200 has that white line painted on it and the D51 498s don't. Okay. But what we're going to talk about today is why the one is closest to us doesn't produce as much steam or the same quantity or thickness as the one behind it. And we're going to do a compare and contrast here. So let me put the camera down. All right, we're going to put them on the track. The one closest to me or to your left is the one that doesn't produce the same volume of steam as the one, this one. I'm gonna turn the lights down a little bit. Might get a little hard to see, but it makes it easier for you to see the steam. All right, the, uh, the motors are turned off. I have that off, but the, the switch to turn on the sound and the steam has been turned on. So I'm gonna prep them, get them going. Now, if you notice, watch this one. Watch how all the volume of steam comes out. One solid mass of steam. Now watch the one on the left. It'll have two streams of steam. All right, if you hope that came out. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna show you when they run, the, see the difference in when they run. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this one on and watch the amount of steam that comes out. All right, it's going to stop it and it's going to put up some steam. All right. All right. Now I'm going to put the camera back down and get the other one. Take this one off the track and put the one that works better on the track. And uh, we'll give it a run so you can see the difference. See the nice tall tune, clean of steam. Really tall, a lot of steam. All right, here we come for a halt. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take it into the, uh, take that one, take it into the shop and see what's going on with it. All right, we got the uh, D51-498 in the shop here, and we're going to, uh, first of all, we're going to go ahead and turn it off, turn it completely off because it's still, it's still on right now. So we're going to, all we got to do is up here, the motor is already turned off. That's on. Turn it off. All you got to do on the bottom side right here, right here is the off on switch. Turn that off. So now it's not making any noise. But what we got to do to get at the mechanism that's causing the problem is we got to take the top shell off. So let's get at that. Now, uh, anytime you've got electronics and water, that's not a good mix. And probably that's the reason why they stopped making this. 
but uh but there's still water maybe some water left inside this is the tank right here so we'll go ahead and take the tank out so you can see that you put the water in right see the arrow right there and there should be a little hole right there that's where you put the water in and that water gravity pulls it down to the tank down here at the bottom i'm gonna take the tank out see some water dripping down we got a little couple of threads holding it on all right this is a little tank it has a little bit of water still in it i'm going to set that aside over there all right, now we got to take the shell off. Oh, right here, the red thing. That is a wick. That wick sits inside the tank. We'll go ahead and take that off so you can see it. And it's, it's a wick, just like any other wick. All right, it, it absorbs water. It's just a cotton, cotton swab stuck inside of a, a container, a holder for it. Mm-hmm. There's a little better shot of it. That sits inside the water. Okay. Bring it back down. All right. We'll set that aside, put it over there. Okay, so that's done. And now we got to uh, take it apart. All right, there's uh, screws holding it together. One in each corner, a couple in each corner. Get my tray out here. You always like to hold on to that last little thread. All right. Now we have some screws right up in here. Got to take those off. Now these D51s perform exactly the same as your Steam Along Thomas. There's no new technology, anything different in there. It's the same technology. Let's see if I can lift it off now. Oh, well, there's one little tiny screw. I forgot about that one. This little tiny screw right there. It also holds on to it. Holds onto the shell, I should say. Looks like these are still holding on. No, oh, yeah, they're they're all free. All right, that's off. The speaker that makes the sounds right there. All right. Now, this is where the steam shoots off of right there and uh, let's see if I could get it to do it at all I'll put the wick back in so you, so you can see it a little bit hang on I gotta get my fumble fingers on okay there it is Okay, there it is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, maybe. Maybe that can help us out a little bit here. All right, turn on the... Uh... Okay, right. Okay, here we go. Hang on, I gotta get it more. No. Nope. There it goes. See a little bit of steam coming off of it? Zoom it in a better. Now, it's not really steam, it's condensation. And I do not completely understand the technology behind it. But if you look right underneath, let me get something to point at. Right there. See that copper? Let's see if I can zoom in on it. 
right there. See that copper uh, spool? That is a gigantic inductor. All right, an inductor opposes a change in current. So if the change, if the current changes, it will induce uh, electrons back into a into a circuit. Now a capacitor opposes a change in voltage. So if the voltage drops, a capacitor will discharge and bring the voltage back. And that's your tech talk. But anyway, that's what's different is that inductor, that gigantic inductor, right? It's copper wire spool, and somehow or another, it it dumps a whole bunch of a whole bunch of of electrons onto that plate and that wick is touching the bottom let's see if you can see the wick wick touching the bottom right down in there got to get my light we're in the right spot so you can see the red there see it see it touching the bottom right there there's the wick touching the bottom of the plate right down there and when that inductor dumps all the electrons onto that plate it causes condensation, not steam. All right, let me back it back out here. All right. Taking a look at it, I see a problem right off the bat with it, with this plate. Now, this is not a solid piece of plate. It is perforated with tiny hundreds and thousands of little microscopic holes. There's two... You might see them. Yeah, you can see them there. But you see this big blob of stuff right there? And that big, big blob right there. That might be what's causing the split in the steam when it comes out. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that off. And there's, it looks like there's like one screw holding it together right there. Right there, one screw. And let me back out for a second. And if you're into fixing trains and everything, do not throw anything away. This is where this comes in. I took off. This is a, it, it didn't work, uh, but I took this, the plate off of it, and I have it right here. Right here. Okay. That's the bottom of the plate. And this is the top of the plate. All right, so that's the next step we're going to do. We're going to take that off, all right?